Blue wave turning to puddle, Trump candidates win seven out of seven races in two weeks. Amid all of the incessant negativity and blatantly biased coverage of the Trump administration, a common refrain from the Democrat-aligned media is that President Donald Trump is toxic to the Republican Party and GOP candidates would be wise to avoid being associated too close with him. Presumably, that would mean Republican candidates should shy away from supporting Trump and his MAGA agenda too much or reject an endorsement from the purportedly despised president if they want to win over voters in the middle. Of course, such a supposition is patently absurd in light of the fact that Trump enjoys roughly 90 percent support among the GOP base, and though his approval rating is generally underwater somewhat with independent voters, it isn't so bad that none would ever consider voting for him or a candidate he backed. But perhaps even more to the point of disproving the left's narrative that Trump is toxic to his fellow Republicans is the fact that all seven out of seven candidates that Trump specifically endorsed over the past two weeks won their primary election battles, with his help. That's right. Two candidates that Trump had backed on Tuesday's elections in Minnesota and Wisconsin won their elections handily, joining the five Trump endorsed candidates who emerged victorious on Tuesday last week in Kansas. Michigan, Missouri, and Ohio. Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach, a staunch Trump ally who received an endorsement for his gubernatorial bid last week, was finally declared the winner last night after his GOP opponent, Governor Jeff Collier ultimately conceded defeat in a close race. In Michigan, Trump endorsed potential Republican star Senate candidate John James in the Republican primary and James emerged with a wide margin of victory to now challenge incumbent Democrat Senator Debbie Stabenow in November. Staying in Michigan, Trump also endorsed Bill Scoot to be the state's next governor. He defeated his primary opponents and will now face Democrat gubernatorial nominee Gretchen Whitmer in the general election. In the important swing state of Ohio, Trump threw his weight behind the candidacy of Troy Balderson for a seat in the House with not just an endorsement but also a campaign rally on his behalf. Balderson won this special election, though he will face off again against the same Democrat opponent in November. Down in Missouri, the Trump-backed candidate for the Republican nomination to face incumbent Democrat Senator Claire McCaskill, Josh Hawley, easily won his race and is poised to knock off McCaskill for her blue seat in a red state. Those wins last week counting the delayed declaration of victory for Kobach that came this week, made Trump 5 for 5 on his endorsements in that round of state primaries and special elections. But Trump was not finished yet and had two more endorsements for primary elections this week. The president issued an endorsement on Monday for congressional candidate Pete Stauber in Minnesota's 8th district. The former police officer and professional hockey player won his race in a landslide victory. Trump also issued an endorsement ahead of Tuesday's primary in Wisconsin for former GOP presidential primary rival and Governor Scott Walker, who also won his race quite easily and will seek to retain his position as governor in November's election. Those two victories added to last Tuesday's victories made the president 7 for 7 on endorsements over the past two weeks, which should pretty much debunk the liberal narrative that Trump is toxic and GOP candidates should run away from him. Indeed, the results of other races in other states have shown that running away from the president isn't exactly the best move for Republican candidates in light of Trump's incredible support among the GOP base, as even many candidates who didn't receive an endorsement but nevertheless align themselves closely with the MAGA agenda also emerged victorious from their respective races. To be sure, these are only primary victories and the Democrat base is as excited as ever to try and take back Congress with a blue wave in November, meaning Republican turnout in the general election is absolutely crucial to ensuring that these primary victories carry over into November and turn into 